A sandstorm blasts through Gaibanda in a rural part of northern Bangladesh. People here are still waiting for the first rains after the dry season. They need fresh water for their cattle. Agricultural scientists Kamal Hossein and Nirmal Bepari from the development organization Practical Action know how vulnerable the local people are to the elements. Climate change is making an age-old problem in Bangladesh even worse. If we visit in here in the next June, July, we will see there is a water and water and there is, there is water. So the big challenge is that that time we need water, we have no water, but when there will be water, we have nothing to do with the water. When the water comes, it inundates entire regions. The Ganges and the Brahmaputra, both huge rivers at any time of the year, burst their banks, flooding wide tracts of land. Then there are the dreaded cyclones. The extreme weather conditions rob people of their homes, their farming land, and even their lives. The desperately longed for rain becomes a curse. A boat trip on the Brahmaputra reveals the extent of the erosion. The floodwaters eat away at the banks of the river, and it's not uncommon for whole sections to collapse. But the country's population of 160 million needs every available inch of fertile land to live. Koka Mia is over 70 years old. He's seen many floods in his lifetime. He was once a prosperous farmer with his own rice paddies. He has six sons and many grandchildren. But the floods caused huge problems for Koka Mia, and he often struggled to feed his family. I lost everything to floods 11 times. They swept my fields, my house. Each time we moved to a new area and started over from scratch, but then came the next flood and destroyed everything again. Again and again, 11 times in all. Two years ago we came here. The floods have turned us into refugees. Farmers who worked the land were left with floodplains. But now a new method has been found to make sandy areas fertile. The farmers dig holes in the sand. They add cow dung and plant a crop that is now providing a livelihood for thousands of people. Pumpkin. Nirmal Bepari has been testing this method for years. Now nearly a hundred sandbanks that were once unfertile are supporting pumpkin plantations, farmed by people who lost their land to floodwaters. A pumpkin, especially, uh, we have selected because farmers can easily grow this pumpkin. They know the cultivable techniques. It is almost easier, number one. Number two, this pumpkin, in many of the vegetables, only pumpkin we can store without cold stress. Easily we can store in the poor farmer's house uh, for a long time, six, eight, two, two, uh, even one year. Koka Mia, who had lost everything, is now able to earn a living. Because the pumpkins keep for so long, he's able to sell them throughout the months, where there's no harvest to maintain his income. He gets the equivalent of 15 euro cents for each pumpkin he sells. He harvested nearly a thousand last year. The pumpkins are his capital, the basis of his business. I can't tell you how much my life and the life of my family has improved. Last year I sold my entire pumpkin harvest and used the money to lease land which now gives me additional income. I haven't been able to buy a cow yet, but I'm hoping I'll be able to this year. Things look good. I hope I can buy one or two cows and then finally renovate my house and lease more land. But the future remains uncertain. A lot will depend on how climate change continues to affect conditions in Bangladesh. We think 
uh, climate change is a bigger issue. Every year, uh, revaluation is increasing. So there is a big challenge. So if we make a good plan for sunburn cropping, different types of crops, then I think it will be managed. The first storms herald the beginning of the rainy season. People here are once again hoping they'll survive the difficult months ahead. The effects of climate change will continue to pose a challenge for Bangladesh, but perhaps the solutions found here could serve as a role model for other parts of the world.